Bujins in 2021. Never thought I would see the day. So what is up you guys? Avery here and I wanted to bring you guys a Bujin deck profile that I found online uh, a couple of days ago and have been kind of testing with it, messing around with it just to kind of see how Bujins of all decks function in 2021. So if you remember years and years ago, uh, the deck used to revolve around cards like Bujin Yamato and Mikazuchi and pretty much making advantage through protecting the castle, that being Yamato. You play stun cards like Vanity's Emptiness, um, a lot of traps, like it was a very good stun deck for its time. The problem that Bujins now have is the fact that they are just such a slow deck and it can take them several turns to kind of get going. So you don't really use cards like Yamato anymore. It is still a good effect to add a Bujin and then dump one. So, you know, you could like add Quillen, send Quillen, add Hair, send Hair, add Crane for the next turn, dump something like Centipede or Hair from your hand to the grave so that you get that advantage, you have that Honest in your hand. Um, but the deck has just been far too slow and it's just been outclassed by many of the things. I mean, look at Dragon Link. Like, you know, you try and slow roll with Bujins, they're going to get knocked down by Dragon Link. So this is a deck with the new support out of Lightning Overdrive. Bujin Torafoon, number one, is cheap. It's like pennies on the dollar. And this thing is a fucking rescue cat. I mean, if you give a deck a rescue cat, it's at least got to be somewhat viable, right? So let's just go ahead and dive into this here. Uh, for the hand traps, we're playing Triple Ash Blossom and Triple Nibiru. This is pretty obvious. This is a going second Utopia Double Go Bird deck. Um, you do have some other plays, like if you open up well enough, which I notice doesn't happen too often, then you go for Mega Clops, um, or you go for like Abyss Dweller. Um, but you're pretty much going to want to go second and make Utopia Double. Uh, we're playing one Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, one Bujin Arasuda, Double Hyrume, three Mahitso, three Torafoon, one Centipede, one Crane, one Hare, one Quillen, two Kage Tokage for the Extender, one White Dragon Wiper Buster, and three Bujin Hyruko. Uh, for the spells, we got one Call By, Triple Chaos Space, one Double or Nothing, three Fire Formation Tanky, two Desires, one Upstart, and then Triple Imperm for the Traps. So let's go ahead and kind of go over the, the main deck monster effects right quick. So Arasuda, uh, if a Bujin monster in your grave or face someone feels banished, you can special summon it from your hand in defense. And then during the end phase, if a Bujin card is added from your deck to your hand, this turns up by drawing while you control him. Then you get to draw a card and then ditch a card. That really doesn't ever come up. Uh, pretty much he's just used in it as an extender. So like if you have Mahitso on the field, you can banish a uh, a Bujin out of your grave to get one, and then you can drop this out, and now you've got two level fours for plays. Uh, Hyrume is kind of the same thing. You banish a Bujin monster from the grave except itself, um, and then if it was summoned by this effect, and it's destroyed by an opponent's battle or card effect, sent from your side of the field of the grave, and both players have a hand, you can ditch a card, and then your opponent also ditches a card. Um, again, not very useful. You're just pretty much using these cards as level four extenders. Um, Centipede, if it's in the grave and you have a Beast Warrior Bujin, you can banish it to pop or spell or trap. Uh, Bujin Hair is the same thing as Centipede, um, but during either player's turn, you can banish it from your grave, target a Beast Warrior type Bujin, and then once during this turn, can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. Quillen, if you control Beast Warrior, you can banish it to target face up card the opponent controls and pop it. Bujin Crane is your honest during damage calculation on either player's turn. Beast Warrior type Bujin, you control battle as a monster, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, the attack, your monster becomes double its original attack. Then we have uh, some of the new cards. Bujin Torafoon. So you can tribute this card. Special summon two Bujin monsters of two different types. So in this case, like Beast and Beast Warrior. From your deck in defense, except itself. Then when you exceed summon a Bujin exceeds, while this card's in a grave, you can equip this card to it. Any monster destroyed by battle with that equipped monster is banished. You can only use each effect of Torafoon once per turn. So you can bring out Susanoo, equip this to it, and then each time it battles, it's going to banish that monster. So, yeah, seem, seems pretty solid. Um, Hyruko is a, a kind of a shitty Pendulum card. Uh, it only has a spell effect. All it does is that you can banish it in your Pendulum Zone, then you target a Bujin Exceeds you control, and then you get to stack another Bujin Exceeds on top of it with a different name. The Materials Transfer. Um, so it, it, it pretty much, like, if you wanted to use, like, Tsukiyomi to ditch your hand and draw two, and then you play the Hyruko to rank up into, like, a different Bujin. So, like, you could give it, like, Amaterasu, Susanoo, things like that. Um, again, the Kage Tokages are just for extenders. You can summon out like this, use its effect to, to 
you know, add something, special summon out this. Um, yeah, you know, again, we're, we're, we're going for first turn plays like Baguska, Dweller, maybe Tiger King. Um, but really, we're just gonna, we're gonna do Utopia Devil. So for the extra deck, we're playing one Dweller, one Tiger King, one Amaterasu, uh, two Susanoa, one Tsukiyomi, one Double Azus, Utopia, Utopia Devil, Baguska, Timeless, uh, one Ahashima, one Mega Clops, one Phoenix, and one Pentastack. There's no side deck, um, because like I said, I, I, if I already said this, I don't know. Um, we got this build from TCG Player, um, I think it was Lucas Peterson that wrote the article. Very interesting build. I really do like it. You know, are you going to be topping events or, you know, are you going to be a remote dual YCS champion with this deck? No, you're not. This is very tier 2, tier 2.5, maybe even tier 3. Just because of the fact that there are better going second decks in today's meta. Like, you've got things like Grand Maju that are just really good at going second. You've got Cyber Dragons, which are really good at going second and even kind of good at going first. This deck's going first turn board is usually going to be like Baguska or Dweller, which... I mean, could potentially be game winners on their own, but I mean, if the opponent has something like Forbidden Droplets, it's just going to kind of wreck your day. But it's still a very fun deck. Um, I would highly recommend trying this out, especially if you want a deck that you want to max rarity out. I was looking at prices last night. Like, um, max rarity Bujins are not expensive. Like, you can get Ultimate Rare Susanoos for like $15. You can get Ghost Rare um, Amaterasu's for like $20. I think so I mean that really they're not they're not expensive at all like if you wanted to max rarity this deck I mean besides things like Imperm, Nibiru's things like that like just the Bujit core like you're looking at what like maybe 50 60 bucks 70 bucks if that um obviously there's some other things in that extra deck in the main deck that are going to run you some prices like Imperm's <laughs> ultimate rare Nibiru's are going to be a pretty penny um but yeah, if you want, if you want like a little pet project, if you want something that's a very fun deck to play that will just, you will pants the shit out of people. And, you know, with a lot of new players in the game, they're not going to really know what Bujins do. Um, it's, it's very interesting. So guys, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, do you think that Bujins have a chance in this format? Do you think that they're just too far gone from previous eras of Yu-Gi-Oh? So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.